Four million pairs in nine years. Four million pairs in nine years. So kicks. Yo, this is Red Man in the building, Dad Roast, we here. And I got my boy Jay right here that owns one of the top leading sneaker stores and brands in the whole world called Urban Necessities, Big Facts. And we're gonna take a tour around the spot and we're gonna ask him some questions. So one of the first questions, Jay, is what is the difference between selling sneakers now and selling sneakers in the early 2000s? That, that's a great question. I think now more than ever, you really have to, it has to be more than just a sneaker. Like it has to be packaged. The presentation has to be right. I'll give you an example. It's like buying Louis Vuitton at a swap meet or buying Louis Vuitton at, at, at the actual Louis Vuitton store. Right. If you see it in the swap meet, you're gonna try to nickel and dime and try to get it for less. You might not even think it's real. No. If you clean up the presentation and provide an experience, you could justify that price and the price is the price. And, and you said something very important. You said it's about giving the experience and the way your shop is set up. When you walk in, it's like, why wouldn't you not want to buy sneakers here? Experience is the most important part of selling. And tell me why. Yeah, and and it's, not just, it's not just the selling part and someone buying because not everybody's going to come into the store and buy right. that first visit. But if the experience is one that is memorable or like overwhelming, they're going to talk about it. Right? right? And the guy or girl that's consumed into sneakers or whatever product it is you're selling, like if the experience is so grand that they can't help but tell everybody that brings up like, yo, I'm in a sneaker. Oh, you're in a sneaker, yo, you heard of this store? Mm -hmm. And the what store? And like, it's just like advertising. Like, it's the experience is everything. Great, great. And it is, it is. Yeah. It comes with all walks of life. No matter what occupation you're in, you have to give the consumer an experience. Right. That's what I always say. What right. kind of tips can you give a person that's trying to get in a sneaker game? You know, um, you really got to focus on building your name and consistency, right? So don't get caught up in like a lot of us when we look at something that we think we can do, regardless of sneakers or not. Right. Like when I look at uh, athletes, I'm like, man, I can shoot like that, but I can't shoot as consistently as that person because I don't have the years that they got it, mm -hmm. right? So when I'm looking at guys when I first started and I started looking at all these people that were selling things that I didn't understand, Right. Man, why does those shoes go for four grand, five grand, ten grand? Damn, you got customers that pay, that spend 20 racks with you a month? Like, that's a thing? Like, not understanding how many days, hours, like, lessons, mm -hmm. hardships, frustrations, times they wanted to quit. Like, you got to get caught up in the repetition and building that, right? So, I would suggest is, like, get caught up in when you're looking at these brands and people you look up to, whether it's sneakers, rap, music, dispensaries, stocks, everything. Look at how long they've been in their, their craft or their profession. Get caught up in that and focus on what do I have to do to get to that. And normally it's just time, energy, and effort. That's right. Right? And hopefully you don't get beat up to the point where you want to quit because what you're what you're signing up to do, whether it's sneakers or anything else, like it you start off as small business and the dream is to become a corporation. And the way that society is built for business, it's it's not designed for small business to win. It's designed to take you out at every single turn. Mm -hmm. Right? Like most small businesses don't even make it out of the first year, let alone yep. five. And yo, like it's year eight for me, eight, and I'm going on nine. And I've been, I almost lost it like four different times this year, but we still like, we still here rolling That's with right. the punches. That's you know? right. This you shit, know? let everyone know where your store at. Right yeah, now. so my store is inside Caesars Palace in Forum Shops here in Las Vegas, Nevada, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, and Miami's next. Wow. So, uh, yo, Red Man Dad Roast, this is my boy Jay, and we're going to take y'all around the store so y'all can get your mind blown. Up here, it's really like, I know it doesn't look like a lot's going on, but it's because of the time of the day. Uh, I got, you know, uh, some of my groupies. No, I'm, I'm joking. Uh, family is a brand ambassador with me on Monster Energy. A uh, great barber. And then family runs a shop out in Texas and good people support good people. So over here what we have is part of uh, some of shoe surgeons made to order options. These are shoes that we do a lot of deconstructing, reconstructing from designer bags to, you know, like Swarovski crystals. And uh, this is the part of the store where we tell you, if you could imagine it, we could create it. Yeah. And all of these are like one to two week turnaround. Shoe surgeon himself, 
This guy's generating millions of dollars doing this. Okay. He's got like wait lists and eight week turnarounds. It's just the deal that we work with them, our turnaround time is a little bit less. This is me on Microsoft Paint saying, I think this is what urban necessities could be. We got barbers that are over here that are patiently waiting for people to get a haircut like myself. I haven't had one in three weeks, and at some point the camera's down and I'm getting a haircut. Office over there. Yeah. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up. What up, what up, what up, what up. And then uh, I got skin design tattoos, which are award winning tattoo artists that focus on photorealism and Udell is one of our uh, bigger and better artists that are here. I don't mean height-wise, because he's, he's dumb short, but he's an amazing artist. Udell, you mind showing him what you're working on? Is it okay if you like point the camera at yeah. your leg and not go here? Uh, this, is, this is the uh, second pass. So the first pass, I come in, block it all in, and then I come back in and do another layer, which enriches the depth, the gray, the details. Everything I, I we do is like all custom. Okay. So I found this reference, and then I put it on her head, you know, kind of just Add convert her the... into. Yeah. But at the yeah. same time, you're not stuck with like, hey, this is what I'm giving you. This is like, That's an artist operation. client said, hey, I'm cool with this like concept, but we he would. Has we... My whole trust. Yeah, exactly. And That's what I was gonna say. Yeah. He's my whole trust, and I fly in here actually from Salt Lake City. Okay. To get tattooed. Absolutely. So that's trust is involved, and it's safe to say that you are a tiger fan. Yeah. Well, this is a, a cheetah. Oh, a cheetah. Okay. Yeah, she has a tiger on the back. Of well, I got a tiger on the back of my. Okay. <laughs> I don't know that's if you good. can see it. Great work. Great work. Thank wow. you. Yeah, so our guys focus on photorealism, and if you can articulate what you want, we have about 10 artists that can actually articulate. We keep some of the inventory. Um, for those watching, depending on what, what finger I scan, okay. it might send a notification, so if you try some weird shit. Uh, but anyways, yeah, so back here we got a few Yeezys. Wow. And a few kid shoes, and a few sneakers that have been pulled from people's personal collections, like Fat Joe, Mayer, Dion from Concepts, who was the guy that was behind like the lobster dunks. And then, um, yeah, it's just, it's basically set up in, in order of like where it's at as far as sales go. So, man. since you started, how many pairs of sneakers roughly about you think you sold? All together through your whole career. Well, man, I'm really bad at math, but I'll tell you this we've done almost $160 million in sales, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And I've bought so many shoes now over the course of these eight or nine years that I could tell you a million dollars is 3,000 pairs give or take of what we've average been paying, which is about 340 to, no, it's more like 400. So 333 a pair, it's, yeah, it's, it's about 3,000 pairs. It's a lot of pairs, man. I'm, yeah, I got a lot of pairs. So if it was just sneakers, and you do- I'm bad with math too, so I don't know. 60, uh, like, man, four million pairs. If, does that math sound right? Am I good? Four, four million times three, uh, 400, yeah. Four million pairs in nine years. Four million pairs in nine years. It's a lot of shit. These are all shoes that we need to process and go through to make sure that they're authentic. Yep. And that they're priced correctly. Paul, how would you tell, how can you tell the shoes was fake or real? Um, a lot of it is just by the stitching and then just the overall materials. You handle so many shoes. I mean, here we work in a place where, you know, we're grateful to have hundreds and hundreds of shoes, sometimes thousands and thousands of shoes that you can kind of discern through and get the really good feel for. A lot of it is just stitching, overall shape. Um, funny times is even the smell, yeah. Weight. The smell. the smell and the weight is the biggest part of it. A Textures. lot of times it's smell. just... Kind of smell. Well, some of the glue, like, it's kind of like that pack that you open up and you know, right. every time I buy this pack, it's going to smell a certain way. And then you see that name somewhere else and you're like, oh, I know that name. I, I actually go through a lot of those packs and smoke a lot of that. This don't smell right, so I'm off. This can't, I see the name, but this ain't really what I'm paying, this ain't what That's I'm when used the math to. Ain't math. Yeah. Down here, we really wanted to make it an experience, right? So you have an ice cream shop that's themed after my Frenchie. So we got popsicle sticks shaped like Frenchies and Jordans. My Frenchie's name is Billion, or Billy for short. So there's literally a billion flavors. 
of your favorite cereals, candies, and energy drinks that you can mix and match in a, a ice cream. A billion flavors. Yeah, literally. Like, there's literally a billion different, like, variations that you can make into, because it, it's custom stuff, like preset, but you can also customize what you want. Wow. Right? So, uh, the sneaker wall is 15 rows, 156 feet each row. There's over 3,000 pairs on that wall. If you take the shelves and make it one shelf, it's over half a mile long. Wow. So it's probably one of the biggest sneaker walls in the world. And then the glass case has well over $2 million worth of toys, art, handbags, refrigerators. It's just like a little bit of everything. So yeah, this is wild. There's a lot of crazy stuff in here. Shoes that are out, shoes that ain't out, like this. Yes, because I, I was looking at this bag here, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. This black Louis bag that lights up right here, and this is 25K. All right, anybody thinking about a Christmas present for Red Man, this would be uh, That's something. a good one. That's a great <laughs> gift to have. Yeah, that's a great gift to have. You know, this shoe right here is the, the uh, Fat Joe, that's out of Fat Joe's personal collection, and it's the one that he wore in the Make It Rain video with Lil Wayne. Oh, wow. That, to me, is like one of my favorite shoes in here. The Haze Dunk, which is like, you know, written, like signed by him. All the core lines, like some of those are like 70, 80 racks. You got shoes that got hit with What's 70, 80 of them. Yes, that one's like that's the, the stage one. That one's big, bro. How much you how much you say it is? Seventy. Seventy racks. Yeah. And then like Iron Maidens, which a, they got hit. Get a close up on that, bro. And then I mean every every that's not seventy racks. Bro. Every section that you look at is like oh shit, oh wow, like like you got Dior's, which we sell multiple a week. Okay. And that's like a ten thousand dollar shoe. We sell multiple a week. Then How you about got the toys? toys. I love the toys. Like, I'm, what's the highest price toy in this book? Uh, maybe three, four grand. Okay. Grand, but we've had some of these. Like here, I could take you over here. Like we've actually sold. That one's 150 racks. I love this right here. So this is they only this is 20 plus years old. They only made 100. This one, 20 of them were damaged in transit from overseas this way. So technically, only 80 of these exist. I had the black dissected, the, the one with the color, mm -hmm. right? That one we sold for 150 racks, like the second we put it out. That's one of them things that when I make it, if you see one of these in any pictures on social media in this background in my house, that's when you clap for me, because that means I made it. Hey. So, <laughs> basketball papa shot, the high score of the month, gets half the money in the machine as a store credit. So we, we used to have this back in the day at the old store in the hood mall, and now we got it here, and then I know you've seen these. Yes. We were the first store to incorporate these, and like we've had almost 3,000 winners to date now in seven years with these. Um, but if it made you say, wow, at one point I put it in the machine, whether it was plane tickets for two to fly wherever you want, haircuts for a year, tickets to fights, tickets to shows, $5,000 sneakers, $10,000 sneakers, $20,000 sneakers, we can't much is it to play this? It's five dollars a play. Five dollars a play. And five dollars a play can get you a pair of hot sneakers that's worth five thousand and more. In some cases, yes. Right now, I think we got it set up with shoes that are like six hundred to seven hundred dollars. But you think about it. Forget what you're winning. Imagine being the person that won, mm -hmm. and you're in the sneakers, and now you see somebody else with sneakers, and they look at your sneakers, and the conversation goes, so, yo, you heard, where'd you get those? Oh, I won those over it. You won those, where you win those? Oh, Urban Necessities. Sorry. So it was always with the intention to get people to talk about the brand. Okay. So we saw like, uh, you know, like, one of the hoodies that we have here is the Un-American Dream, and you know, uh, like, the, a lot of people look at me like the American dream, right? But I always joke that it's like the un-American dream because most people that have that dream are not from here, right? So the UN, the American dream, kind of in one. So that's one of our top selling ones. Then we have like um, Dice Cherries. We try to make it Vegas, right? So we've, we've done at this point in eight years, like over a thousand different designs on shirts. And we probably sell like slow month 2000 shirts a good month like 4000 shirts most of them are happening in store and it's just cool like it didn't start as uh yo i have a brand but now it's it's like i have a brand how big is quality control how how important that is to oh it's everything right i mean it's like think about like if you have a bad batch of weed and you put that out what does that do to your brand it's over why should people shop 
at Urban Necessities. Like, I already know why. Like, why wouldn't you want to shop in a spot like this? But why should a person from out of town that never heard of your business should come and shop at Urban Necessities? You know, that's a great question. I've never been asked that. So, you really got me here improving on an answer. But I, I think the reason why I would want you to walk in these doors and maybe buy something, even if you don't buy anything, is I think we're, we're really treating the culture with respect more than anything and putting it in a platform where all walks of life can feel safe and can trust that what we're offering is authentic goods. And, um, you know, it's it's for us, by us kind of thing, man. And it's like, this is, this is the dream. And it started with one shoe and it turned into this. So that's, that's really all I can. Go. Red, I love you, bro. You know, but I, I got a lot of stuff I got to do, so you got to get up out of here, man. I, I, I got to go, bro. I appreciate it. Yo, bro, what, what the fuck, bro? <laughs> All right, Jay, I'll catch you on the rebound, bro.